Okay, I am recording. Um, it looks like I'll be your uh, virtual TA today, so uh, bear with me as this uh, goes down. So this is something I'll, I'll definitely be doing uh, for the future, even when I am there in person. I think uh, recording it on Zoom so that you can play it back and that I'm not uh, presenting to one class and broadcasting to another, which is kind of um, unfair. Uh, so I'll, I'll be recording for both of you um, and then you can come back to the, the this video as you please. Um, so let me share my screen and then we will get started. Awesome. Um, so just to make sure everyone is on the same page, we will be first doing physics, uh, Stony Brook intro lab. And we will get to Rich's nice page here. We will go to our class, 133. And we'll go to manuals and course schedule. And we will go to pendulum, which is today's lab. Uh, the first thing I would like to mention is that you should look through this equipment slide here. Uh, make sure you have all these things. Um, by now, uh, the lab has been running for a week. so. Hopefully every lab station should have these things, um, particularly the pendulum setup was, was missing last week. Um, the next thing I would like to note is that this equation in the background uh, will play a good sizable role in the analysis at the end of the lab. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that uh, later on. Uh, the next thing I want to mention is the edit that I would like to make in part one of this procedure. So after reading this, um, come back to this video and, and read this uh, part one, I would like to edit this part right here where it says then switch partner positions and record five trials. So when it says record, um, what it's mentioning is the Google Sheet. So if we come up here to our Google Sheet data table, everyone has one of these. copy and you have it here. So when it says fill in for partners one and two, something that I would like to edit is just do one par partner. Um, something that I noticed uh, when doing this lab last week was um, if one person is uh, swinging the pendulum and the other person is taking the data, uh, it's easier to maintain social distancing um, with the whole green dots thing on, on your lab station. So one person has a green dot like diagonally across from each other and it kind of defeats the purpose if you're switching like, like we would normally, right? Each person gets to swing the pendulum and each person gets to uh, put something in the, in the Excel sheet. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose if we, if we do that now because we want to maintain social distancing so that the school stays open and stuff, right? Um, so just take that out and in your uh, data sheet, uh, you will be just filling out one of the columns. Um, so let me get that open as well in another tab. That is not it. Let's see, can I disable attendee annotation, hide video panel. How about that? Nope, not it. Hide floating meeting controls. There we go. Okay. Making a copy. So what we'll do is, as a result of that, uh, you will not be answering these questions in the, the gray and blue. Uh, does your measurement agree with your partner to, to within uncertainty? Only one column is, is being done. So you, you, for example, are measuring and your partner is typing things into the computer. And then you can use the share feature of Google Sheets to just share the data in between each other. Um, and that's fine, right? You can just, um, as I mentioned on the, the lab report rubric, just on the title page, uh, mention who your partner is. And I'll just assume that you guys are using uh, the same data. And the next thing I would like to mention is the first kind of big um, 
Excel formula that you'll be doing. Um, I, I want to point this out because when I was a freshman in college doing similar labs to this, um, writing things in Excel uh, as big as what needs to be done in some of these cells is quite daunting. So in cell C9 is a, a rather large formula. And uh, what I'll do later in the lab um, for some of these Excel formulas um, and equation manipulation uh, in like an hour or so into the lab, once everyone starts to ask me questions on Zoom, I will uh, post a second video where I, uh, because I don't want to just give you all the answers, um, that kind of defeats the purpose of the learning. Um, so to figure out what equation you're going to be using here and throughout the rest of this, you are going to head over to the lab manual, scroll all the way down to get to references and tools, and then you're going to click on something called Guide to Uncertainty Propagation and Error Analysis. The hint that I will give you is this is a very, wow, okay. This is a very large uh, PDF. I'm going to narrow down what is relevant for you today uh, and most of the rest of the labs, uh, in fact. So pages seven through nine are what's going to be important to you today. So starting from equation two, let's see what equation one is. Okay, uh, yeah, so starting from equation two, um, going down to here on uh, page nine. So all those equations are what you could potentially be using in this, uh, for instance, when I reference this big cell right here, which will have a big formula in it. Um, just look through those um, equations, see uh, which one, based on the notation of the that error analysis PDF, um, which one um, looks right. Um, and similarly for C10, uh, the formula is on the same page, uh, very very similar to this the formula that goes in C9, just uh, slightly different. Um, next, this value here will be carried over and used one second. Okay, just making sure I have uh, following the agenda I have here. Um, this uncertainty and measurement will be the same uncertainty and measurement here. So what you'll be doing is copying and pasting whatever value you get here into this column all those cells, so column E. Scrolling down to column E, all here. And then what you'll be doing from column E to column G is what they call propagating the error. This is in the analysis part two. So what you're doing is measuring the uncertainty in 10 periods of a pendulum. Um, one other thing to note about the period of a pendulum is uh, the period is one full um, oscillation. So if you think about a wave um, uh, or a sine or a cosine function going up and down like this, so one uh, full period of a sine function is starting from zero, coming up, passing zero, and coming up again. So that's one period. So for a pendulum, it would be one period, two period. Um, so it's not, it's not one period, two period, three period. It's, it's every second time it passes the same point. And you'll, you'll note in the, in the lab manual that we'll actually be measuring when it passes the bottom. So let's say you're, you're, pendulum is swinging like this, you'll be measuring with a stopwatch, one period, two period, three period, and so on, all the way to 10 periods. Um, the, the reason that you're measuring it down at the bottom as opposed to the tops is actually, uh, we'll get to that later, it's one of the discussion questions uh, for the lab. So think about why you're measuring it at the bottom as opposed to, to the sides. Um, the next point I want to make is that when you are uh, propagating the error from 10 periods down to one period, because that's what the value you actually want, 
you're going to go from column E to column G. And to do so, you're going to be using uh, one of the equations on page eight or nine. And as a hint uh, to what equation you want to use, um, the letters, let me see if I can pull this up and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So for instance, uh, these A, these capital A and capital B are measurement quantities. So for instance, that could be a period or a length or uh, some kind of time, something that you measure with a, a ruler or a stopwatch or something. And uh, these little N's, like lowercase N's or lowercase C's, those are just constants, so numbers, like 10, for instance. Um, so there's a, there's a hint for that. Um, let's see, in cells. Okay, so one thing that confused me when I first did this last week was in cells I24, well, all, all these, so in, in column I and column K, um, because you are measuring one thing, you're measuring length. And if you want to get the uncertainty in length times length or length squared, right, raised to the second power, what you're not doing is using an equation like A and, A and B. Because A and B in an equation like equation nine would be two separate quantities. So that would be like the uncertainty in length times the period, two, two different measured quantities. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're trying to uh, do column I and K. Um, one last thing, uh, no, a few more things. Uh, so in part three of the analysis, um, there's a, a convention here that is unfamiliar to me. Um, so when it says make three plots, L versus T, um, for some reason the convention is swipped uh, swapped. So what you're actually doing here is putting t uh, and t squared on the x-axis. So this is plot y versus x, uh, y versus x, y. So that's backwards based on what I think. Like if, if someone tells me to plot a versus b, I, I put a on the x-axis. Um, so just be aware of that when you're using this, this plotting tool, which looks like this. Um, put your, your x's should be the uh, second thing, so the t and the, and the t squared. Uh, and one last two things. Also in this uh, third part, it says to take the slope of the most linear graph. If you cannot find which graph is the most linear, because it wasn't at all clear to me which one was the most linear, um, I'm sure there's some kind of um, calculus that, that, that tells you which one is the most linear, maybe the, the value of the slope or, or something like that, um, or, or how far it deviates from a, a line. Anyway, um, one thing to, to note which graph you should be using when you're, you're doing the final step of the experiment to calculate the uh, acceleration due to gravity, scroll all the way back up to equation one. That's the secret here. So when you're making the graphs, it asks you to make a graph for L versus T, L squared versus T, and L versus T squared. Notice up in this equation that they're not asking you to make any graphs uh, of T versus square root of L. Um, so that's, that's a hint. Um, and, and a second hint would be to square both sides of this equation. So take T squared, uh, two pi squared, and if you square a square root, it, it cancels the square root. Um, so I'll come back to that in, in, in the video later, uh, working out the full uh, derivation um, and, and how you can fit that to a, you know, like a y equals ax plus b line graph. And that's, what, that's ultimately what they mean by a most linear graph. And one final thing here. At the end of lab, uh, there are things called discussion questions. And the two that I uh, think are the most interesting are this one, the procedure in measuring the period, as well as the systemic error, massive string. Uh, so at the end of lab, um, just try to get the attention of one of the TAs. Uh, and because I won't be there today, um, the lab instructor, Rich Leppertz, uh, as well as the undergrad TA, Eric, 
will be uh, going around and, and helping you uh, try to get their attention and, and answer uh, both of these questions after you've you know made your made your graphs and thought about these questions a little bit with your with your partner um, try to get their attention and and answer the questions um, if you cannot get their attention and it's the end of class um, which is what happened to me last week um, students were uh, asking, you know, trying to answer the discussion questions uh, all at the same time, and it was very hard. Um, so if that happens and, and the class ends and you need to leave for another class or something, um, just include those in your lab report. Um, so if you, if you, I mean, obviously it's easier to answer them in person and, and just uh, discuss them with, with the, the TA or, or Rich, um, but if you really need to leave or something, that's, that's okay to put them in your lab report. Um, so that's all for now. Um, Keep in mind, I will be online the entire time in, in a Zoom office meeting that I'll, uh, I'll send a link out in the announcements. Um, just uh, hop in the, um, the kind of uh, the meeting room and then just uh, ask questions. Uh, also, you, I will enable screen sharing for everyone. So for instance, you can, um, start sharing your Excel screen. Uh, and, and in that, you can ask specific questions about your formulas. Um, and again, uh, like the Excel formula is quite hard. So after like 20 minutes or so, or 15 minutes of people trying it, I, I'll, I'll um, post a video of, of the actual um, equation. Uh, similarly with the um, some of the other error equations uh, and the uh, doing the uh, equation one rearranging. Um, so have fun, I'll see you shortly.